In this video, I am going to explain sample preparation, sample derivatization and sample injection systems used in GC. In previous video, I have explained introduction theory and overall instrumentation of GC and carrier gases used in GC analysis. If you are new on my channel, please subscribe. Now let's start today's video. Sample preparation and sample derivatization in GC. Sample in gaseous or vapor form is analyzed by GC. As we are talking about GC, sample which is to be analyzed must be in gaseous or vapor form. To convert a solid or liquid into gaseous form, it must be volatile and thermally stable. So, volatility and thermal stability of sample, these two properties are very important in GC analysis. If the sample is less volatile or non-volatile, there will be problem in GC analysis because it will not convert into gaseous form. And if the sample is thermally unstable or less stable, then also there will be problem in GC analysis because due to heating, the structure of sample may get destroyed. If the sample is less volatile and less thermally stable, now in both these conditions, it is not possible to analyze such sample by using gas chromatography. Now what is the solution? The solution is we can go for sample derivatization. What is sample derivatization? Derivatization is the process of chemically modifying a compound to produce a new compound which has properties that are suitable for analysis using GC or HPLC. Now derivatization is nothing but the chemical reaction carried out on the sample to convert it into a more suitable form which can be analyzed by GC or HPLC. In, in this chemical reaction, the structure of solute remains same, just some functional groups are modified. Now why this derivatization is carried out? The reason is that first reason is to increase volatility of solute. By volatility of solute is increased by eliminating the polar functional groups such as hydroxyl group, amine group, sulfahydryl group or carboxylic acidic group. Such groups if they are eliminated volatility of solute will increase. Second reason to increase thermal stability of solute. Next to improve detector response. Now uh, introduction of some halogenated acyl group in sample will improve its detection by electron capture detector. And next is to improve separation of solutes by using chromatography. So for these reasons derivatization of sample is carried out. Now we will see derivatization of sample. There are various methods of derivatization. First method is by silylation. Second is by alkylation. Third method is by acylation. And fourth one is chiral derivatization. Now we will see one by one in detail. First method of sample derivatization is silylation method. Silylation of organic compound is the most widely used derivatization procedure in gas chromatography. Silylation is introduction of silyl group into sample molecules. This is the structure of silyl group and this is trimethyl silyl group. Silylation is efficient for analysis of alcohols including sugars, phenols, simple carboxylic acids and fatty acids. The mechanism involves replacement of active hydrogen such as hydrogen of hydroxyl group, hydrogen of carboxylic acidic group, hydrogen of amine group, hydrogen of sulfahydryl group. Replacement of these active hydrogens with trimethyl silyl group. Now this is the general reaction of silylation where the active hydrogen, this is the active hydrogen of sample 
which will react with the silylating reagent and it will uh, uh, give a transition intermediate product and finally the hydrogen is replaced by trimethyl silyl group silylation is a nucleophilic attack sn2 type of reaction here better the leaving group better will be silylation replacement of active hydrogen by silyl group reduces polarity of compound and reduces hydrogen bonding it improves volatility and thermal stability of compound alcohols and phenols undergo silylation more easily than amines and amides carboxylic acids show medium reactivity towards silyl silylation reagents now here these are the silylation reagents used in silylation uh, that is bis trimethyl silyl acetamide n bis trimethyl silyl trifluoroacetamide n methyl trimethyl silyl trifluoroacetamide these reagents are generally used in silylation so this is the first most often most widely used derivatization reaction next is alkylation derivatization by alkylation alkylation is a replacement of active hydrogen of sample molecules by an aliphatic or aliphatic aromatic group and produce a ester here esterification of sample takes place this is the general reaction of alkylation the sample with active hydrogen reacts with alkylating reagent and it gives ester product alkylation of sample will reduce polarity of sample and improve thermal stability alkylation re reactions can also be used to prepare ethers thioethers thioesters n alkylamines amides sulfonamides etc due to alkylation polarity of sample is reduced because active hydrogen has been replaced by alkyl group dimethylformamide diazomethane benzyl bromide these reagents are used for alkylation of acids phenols and other substance now we'll go for acylation the third type of reaction for derivatization acylation in this type of reaction and an acyl group is introduced into the organic compound the compound that has active hydrogen such as hydroxyl hydrogen sulfhydryl hydrogen or amine hydrogen can be converted into esters thioesters or amides respectively through the acylation acylation is also a popular reaction for production of volatile derivatives of highly polar and less volatile organic materials now this is the general reaction of acylation fluoracyl imidazole fluorinated anhydrides n methyl bis trifluoroacetamide pentafluorobenzoyl fluoride pentafluoropropanol these reagents can be used for acylation of sample now last that is chiral derivatization chiral derivatization involves reaction of enantiomeric molecules with enantiomerically pure chiral derivatizing agent that is cda to form two diastereomeric derivatives that can be separated by using gc generally there are two ways of separating enantiomers by chromatography first is separation on optically active stationary phase that is a chiral column is used for separation in this case and second is preparation of diastereomeric derivatives that can be separated on a non chiral stationary phase n trifluoropropyl chloride methoxy trifluoromethyl phenyl acetic acid these reagents are used for chiral derivatization 
Now we'll go for sample injection systems used in GC. There are two main types of sample injection systems. First is manual injection and second is automatic injection. In manual injection, direct mode or direct injection is used and in automatic injection, auto sampler, headspace sampling, purge and trap sampling and pyrolysis sampling these are various methods of automatic injection. Now we'll see in detail one by one. First is direct injection. Here the standard mode of injection is direct mode or direct injection through a micro flash vaporizer direct injector. In this system the sample is injected by a hypodermic syringe through a self sealing silicon rubber septum onto a glass liner within a metal block where it is vaporized and swept onto the column. Now this direct injector has such structure which has silicon self sealing silicon rubber septum and a heated metal block. Now some portion of this injector is within the O1 and in the O1 it is connected this injector is connected to the column. Now this is the way for carrier gas. Carrier gas will enter into the injector in this portion. Sample is introduced by a hypodermic syringe. The, the droplets of sample are injected at the portion of heated metal block. Due to the temperature of heated metal block, the sample is converted into gaseous form and due to the flow of carrier gas, this gaseous sample is carried towards the column. The metal block is heated at the temperature at which sample is converted into vapor. So this is direct mode or direct injection. Next is auto sampler. There are various types of auto samplers. First is auto injector AI 3000. This is the auto injector AI 3000. It has 8 vials. The vial capacity is 2 ml. 99 injections per vial can be injected to the GC. The syringe capacity here it is 10 microliter. Next is auto sampler AS3000. This is AS3000 auto sampler. Here the number of vials is increased. Up to 105 sampling vials are present in AS3000. The remaining parameters that is maximum vial capacity, injections per vial and syringe capacity are same as that of auto injector AI 3000. Next auto sampler is auto sampler tri plus. This is auto sampler tri plus. Here up to 300 vials are present. The syringe capacity is also dif uh, different here. The syringe capacity like 5 microliter, 10 microliter, 100 microliter or 250 microliter syringes can be used in auto sampler trial. Now we'll move towards headspace sampling. Headspace sampling is a technique in which volatile material may be extracted from a heavier sample matrix and injected into gas chromatography. The more volatile com compounds will tend to move into the gas phase above the sample. Here some fixed amount of liquid or solid sample is kept in the vial and this vial is having silicon rubber closer. Now this liquid or solid is not injected into the GC but above the surface of this sample some volatile components are present and these volatile components are injected into the GC. So in short, in headspace sampling, gaseous sample is injected into GC. This is the actual image of headspace sampler. 
Headspace sampler is used in analysis of perfumes, food product, drinking water, waste water, human breath and blood products etc. Next we'll move for Persian trap sampling. In Persian trap sampling the sample is kept in a vessel which has an inlet for inert gas and outlet for volatile components. This outlet is connected to the adsorbent trap or a cold trap. In Persian trap sampling the measured amount of sample is placed in a sealed vessel. The sample is continuously purged with inert gas until all volatile components are removed from it. The volatile components are retained on the adsorbent trap which allows purge gas to pass through the vent. Now it means that inert gas is continuously purging the sample which will cause the volatile co components to come out from the sample and enter into the outlet. Now these volatile components will travel the outlet and get adsorbed on the adsorbent trap. Now, once the extraction is completed, the adsorbed analyte is rapidly released by heating the trap and these components are injected into the GC by back flushing the trap using GC carrier gas. Now, this Persian trap sampling has various factors affecting on it. The main factor is amount of each compound purged is proportional to both its vapor pressure and its solubility in the sample and these both that is vapor pressure and solubility are in turn affected by the sample temperature. Now this is about the purge and trap sampling. Now we will see pyrolysis sampling. In pyrolysis sampling the sample is heated in the injection chamber of GC to a temperature at which thermal decomposition that is fragmentation of sample occurs. Pyrolysis temperature ranges from 400 to 1400 degrees Celsius. Higher temperature pyrolyzers are also available. Three types of heating techniques are used in actual pyrolyzers that is isothermal furnace, inductive heating that is curie point filament, resistive heating by using platinum filaments. Pyrolysis samplers are generally combined with GCMS that means gas chromatography mass spectroscopy. It is used for analysis of synthetic polymers and copolymers. Pyrolysis samplers are also used in analysis of environmental samples and also used in forensic laboratories. So this is about the pyrolysis sampling. This is overall about the sample preparation, sample derivatization and sample injection in GC. Now this is the vast topic I tried to explain in short. I hope you understood all these points. Thank you for watching my video. Thank you very much and please subscribe my channel.